Hey everybody, this is Brad from Still Dragon. I'm here with my associate, Emily. Hi, nice to see you guys. This is actually her second video <laughs> with us here at Still Dragon. If you haven't checked out our pie pairing video, be sure to give that a check. That was a lot of fun for us. Well, I had fun, I don't know. I had, had fun. fun, I had a lot of fun. Just that last one hit me a little too hard. I've said it a couple of times already. <laughs> yeah, it happens to all of us, you'll get used to it. So today we're gonna to talk about how to run a reflux column and a little bit about the difference between pot stilling and running reflux. Since Emily is new to this, we're all gonna be learning together and y'all get some time with me being professor here. Yeah, he's helping me out a lot already. Trying to, anyway, some days I'm better than others. So today we're gonna to demonstrate using our double dragon kettle. If you're interested in the double dragon, I did a video where we talked about how to do the piping configurations and changing the valves. Be sure to check that out. Today, we're really just gonna talk about the column and the pot side itself, so we don't have any of the piping configured. This is not the way that you would actually run it. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now that our lawyers are happy and nobody can get mad at us, we're gonna jump into this a little bit. So pot stilling is about as simple a distillation cycle as you can find. When you're distilling, you are doing one phase change. You're going from a liquid to a vapor. And then at the end, you're going to go from a vapor back to a liquid. So that's your second phase change. Each phase change acts as a separation step. So the goal of distillation is to separate the ethanol from the rest of the stuff that's in the beer. Beer is wonderful. Spirits are better in my opinion. You may disagree. <laughs> I was about to say. Emily comes from a brewing background, so you know we'll let it slide for now. <laughs> now, pot stilling, very basic. Running a reflux column is the same basic principle, you're just adding in a few more steps to do things in a much more controlled manner. When you're pot stilling, you have one control point, which is your boil. Your boil determines everything that's coming over in your final product condenser. When you're running a reflux column, you have your boil in the kettle, you have this piece right here, which is a deflegmator. This is a partial reflux condenser. So what you're doing is you're controlling the boiling point of the vapor that passes over into your final product condenser. By controlling that, you add on another separation step here and another control point to really fine tune your product and make it be more of what you want it to be rather than what the equipment itself decides it wants to be. Make sense? Yeah, it does so far. Okay. Another wrinkle on this, each one of these plate levels acts as another separation step. So you have condensation and evaporation happening through these. You're bubbling hot vapor up, which will take the lower boiling point constituents up the column with it. And the higher boiling point constituents are going to condense down and drain down the column. So if you run this in 100% reflux mode, meaning you're not allowing anything to pass through to the final product condenser. Almost all the vapor stays in the column. What you'll see is you'll get higher boiling point constituents walking up the column and the lower boiling point constituents walk down the column so you get greater separation and greater purity of product. What we see is if you run too much heat at your kettle or not enough coolant to your deflegmator, either way you can get what we call smearing. So you don't get that good separation. You get some uh, heads, hearts, and tails mixed together, and you're not going to get as pure a product as you otherwise could. So when it comes to the smearing, you said that it, it's a lot to deal with your temperature of your boiling point. Yes. What is the highest temperature when it comes to that? Well, so if you hit 210 or 212, you're bringing water up into the column too. So you're really not doing yourself any favor because you want to separate as much ethanol from the watery base as you can. That makes so sense. you really want this head temperature, which your vapor temperature directly correlates to your ABV. So you want this to be in the 173-ish range. I mean, it's really going to depend on what you're trying to make. If you're trying to do something with a lot of lighter fruitier notes, like a brandy, you may want to pull a little more heads in there because that's where your fruit flavors come from. That's where a lot of that wonderful goodness happens, but okay. it's also where the hangovers happen too. So you have to be judicious and careful with what you're doing there. Okay, that makes okay. sense. 
And then when it comes to uh, after brandies, what about whiskeys? So whiskeys are such a wonderfully diverse category. So if you're trying to drag up some of the oils and some of the heavier, more tailsy notes that come there, you may intentionally run deep into your tails. In fact, I've got a couple of customers that they separate their heads and hearts, then they keep running for a while and blend some of the tails back in later because it adds some interesting notes and it makes things a little more rounded and robust. So it gives you some wonderful, wonderful flavors in there. When you're talking about the deflagmator though, mm -hmm. you're talking about how this is a cooler temperature point for the vapor, so it goes back into a liquid, correct? Yeah, yes, okay. So think of the deflagmator as the brakes on the system. If you press the brakes hard, you put it into 100% reflux mode. Mm -hmm. So you're not allowing any vapor to go through onto your final product condenser. Okay. And so you let this cycle through and do its work separating things. As you ease off the brakes, then the car starts to speed up and you're going a little faster and you're letting some things that have a little bit lower boiling point go through. Mm -hmm. And so this is an efficient way to separate your heads and your hearts, hearts and, and your tails, tails because by controlling the temperature, only certain parts can go through at a time. Mm -hmm. You're really just choking it back there. Okay. And when it comes to your setup for your deflagmator and everything, you just have a cold hose connect right here or? Yeah, so with your deflagmator, our recommendation is to have your cold hose come in through the bottom mm -hmm. and have your hot hose with the valve on it coming out of the top. Why is that? The reason why we do that, you always wanna control your outlet from the top side in order to make sure that this stays full completely and you wanna control your outlet and have the valve on the hot side because your flow is coming in from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Your tap, your reservoir, whatever, is going to be pushing in to the bottom. So you wanna control where the push isn't happening. So this flow will keep the vessel full and pressurized and you control your outlet flow to control the temperature coming through. This line will be hot, but if it's hot all the way down the column here in the deflagmator, it's going to mean that you're not getting good heat transfer. Mm -hmm. You wanna see a gradient happen here. So you want the bottom to be cool, the top part to be hotter, and that way you know that you're extracting as much heat as you can from the vapors going through. Okay. Now, during your run, that zone will move because as you go further, you wanna let those higher boiling point constituents go into your product condenser. So you'll see that temperature line go down. Okay. And then when it comes to this as well, I know that the column, how are you making sure that there's no vapor that is going into here? Is there, because I know you don't so, want it to happen at both Exactly. Points. So the way that we get around that when you're running a double dragon is your vapor will always start at your copper helmet. Okay. And we've got some fun piping configurations we go into a little bit more in the other video mm -hmm. about how we keep the vapor from coming up here. Okay. So cool. there, there is a way to do that. We do that, but that's uh, another video for another time. So well, everybody, thank you all for watching. Let us know what questions you have. Leave us a comment below. Feel free to reach out to us, shoot us an email, give us a phone call. We're here to help and we'd love to discuss your future plans and systems. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And yeah, if there's anything you need from us, we're here to help, so let us know. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See you soon.